This is a video on how to add additional video storage to a direct TV DVR. Specifically the one that I have is the uh, HR-23700. That has a uh, one gig drive in it and they make ready to hook up uh, drives to them, Western Digital. Uh, they're about $110 if you can, that's the cheapest you can find them. It's one terabyte. Um, and the thing about that is, is that I discovered uh, to maybe a happy mistake that a two terabyte drive, uh, Western Digital, of the type that'll work was 119, so it's ten dollars more. <laughs> so I was like, okay, uh, we'll try to go that way. Um, if you're wanting to go that way, if you're wanting to do a two terabyte drive, they don't make a two terabyte ready to make plug-in drive for uh, the Direct TV. So what you have to do is um, get the drive and get the components that you're going to need to build an external drive that's bigger than the one that they standardly make, uh, since they don't make a two terabyte drive. Um, to do that, just to give you a basic idea of what you're going to need and what some of the work involved, so in case you, you know, at this point you're like, well, this is too much, I don't want to do it, you can go ahead and just quit watching the video. Uh, you're going to need a power supply, which is about $6, and it, it, provides, it provides power to the uh, hard drive. And also you're going to need a cable that connects the uh, SATA drive to the uh, ESATA connector on the back of the DVR. So this is about $3. And a little bitty fan and also a power connector which actually comes with the power supply. So the fans to keep it cool in the enclosure that we're going to build. Altogether you're adding you know, about $10 worth of stuff. Uh, the enclosure is very low cost as you're going to see. <laughs> so apart from your time, you're getting a 2 terabyte drive which actually doesn't exist and you're adding 2 terabytes worth of storage to your DVR which is a pretty good thing. Uh, we're going to talk about the drive next in specific as to what that drive needs to be. This is a Western Digital audio video drive uh, which makes the big difference when you're trying to do this yourself. Build an external enclosure with a, a larger drive than they standard the issue. Uh, it's an AV drive. So you see, the, you see on here the HDAVGP. Uh, the reason why you have to use an AV drive, and you'll see on forums where people try to do their own or even use like a one terabyte drive just to try to do their own, uh, is they have a lot of problems. Startup problems, running problems, pausing problems, freezing problems, lockup problems. The reason for all those is, is that a normal drive isn't meant to do video applications. In a video application, and especially in this instance, you've got multiple streams. You've got maybe multiple, you're recording two things at once, or recording one and watching one. Uh, the deal is there is that video has to be buffered. It has to be absolutely contiguous. It has to be one piece. The DVR can't see any breaks in it, because the guts in the VCR for a, um, a DirecTV DVR isn't the brightest thing in the world. It's pretty impressive, but it doesn't uh, take a lot of abuse as far as the data stream from the disk drive. <laughs> so AV drives are designed to buffer the video and make it contiguous. So it, basically the computer in the DVR never has to wait for data. That's one of the requirements. Uh, the fan that we have is because AV drives tend to run a little bit hotter, even though this is a green power drive, so it's a little bit less. Uh, still need a fan in it. And uh, next step is to go ahead and describe on how we're gonna approach the enclosure. Now when you get your disk drive, it's going to be packaged in a bo another box, but it's going to have another box inside of that one, and those are usually uh, packaged for shock absorption. Um, one of the impressions I had when I first opened this up, and I've done disk drive design where you, you know, do the packaging and stuff so that it can be shipped, or you know, packaging inside of another product. This, when I opened this up, <laughs> I saw the way this was packaged, and I'm like, you know, this is almost just as good as you can find, you know, in a in a piece of commercial equipment the way they have it arranged by except the fact that it's a uh, plastic you know very thin plastic holders it's a, it's a big mount and it's also cardboard which is not really good but still uh, I was like I couldn't build a I couldn't build a better enclosure this that, that has this good of a, a, a mounting to it uh, that was you know pretty cheap and it's not something that moves around has shock associated with it and didn't have a lot of other drives around it so Believe it or not, this cardboard box that was the uh, shipping box, the packaging box for the hard drive is what I'm going to use to build the enclosure. So I'm going to go through those steps and show you what you need to do to make that work. The first thing you need to do is, uh, as we mentioned, this is an AV drive, which means that <clears throat> it's going to be hot. So what you have to do is you have to put a hole inside the lid in order to put air into the, you can either pull air through it or you can push air into the unit. Now, to put the hole inside the box is not that difficult. If you had a razor knife, 
You can't do it with scissors, you can't do it with a razor blade. If you had a razor knife with a point on it, it's a little bit better. So those cheap throwaway ones. Basically what you do is you set the fan onto the box and then inside, inside the lid here, you can use a pen or whatever and go in and mark where the inside of the, uh, of the inside trace is. And you can use any kind of fan you want. Obviously, you don't want something very big. Um, this actually is a, a Rotron fan, and it's a, a Flight LT, and it's a, it's a 24 volt fan. I'm going to be running it on 12 volts, which means it's going to be pretty quiet and still have the adequate airflow. Um, so, what you do is you basically mark this, and then when you do mark it, you pull it off. Go ahead and cut with your knife. Just go ahead and, and do a, a motion like this where you're taking the, the blade and just kind of pushing down and just kind of notching into the, the cardboard until you get all the way around and it just pops out. The holes are fairly easy. You just go ahead and you know, push, <laughs> put this back on top and then you can go ahead and um, either take a, a screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, you have to be careful, kind of push it through easy because you don't want to tear. You more like want to push the cardboard out of the way in the packaging. This is what I used here. This is an awl, you know, basically it's a pointed instrument. And you can just, once you got it set where you want to, you just push the awl down through the holes into the box below. And that makes a very nice hole. And uh, one other thing that you can see here is another hole right here. That's where the wire goes through. So and you can slit this across like I have right here to mount the wire. Uh, one thing about this is usually for fans like this, if you mount them uh, label up, they're pushing air from the outside in. And you know, obviously the other way they'll they flip it over, it'll pull air out. Uh, you don't have to screw this down. <laughs> Um, you could just maybe put something like tape on it and you could put RTV around the edges, you know, RTV glue, uh, or you can like tape on this edge around or something just to hold it in place. It's not very critical. The RTV is probably the best idea. Just go ahead and put a couple little dabs of RTV underneath of it, sit it on and put some tape on it until it dries just to hold it down. There's no stress there. You just need to keep it, keep it in place. One of the things you have to do when you do the uh, fan is you got the wires, the power wires coming off of the fan and you have to run those over and you have to hook them into the cable that actually comes with the power supply. And uh, this cable is uh, basically, the, 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 this is the old style connector, these come Molex connector. To make that solder connection, um, you can see you have to get these out, there's two little wings right here, there's a wing on the other side and what you have to do is get a pair of tweezers, go down inside that connector and push these in and that'll allow you to slide this whole pin out. Um, normally, I, I don't do a solder connection like this because it's not strain relief, you know, but it's a very thin wire, very small wire. It's not going to take a lot of stress anyway. Um, dab a little bit of, of solder uh, flux on this and then go ahead and solder it. And uh, use like less than a 30 watt soldering iron if you can. Don't heat this up too much. Problems happen <laughs> when you can get these things too hot. These uh, pins lose their. Um, their um, stiffness and you know this, this connector becomes a, a bad pin basically you're not gonna be doing that much with this so it's gonna be an easy connection to make but you have to do this for the red and or what which I have hooked to the yellow which is the plus 12 and also um, you know for the black wire that hooks to ground and just basically go ahead and stick this back into the connector and pretty much you hear it snap and and there you go you're good to go just plug it in now, when you take your dish drive out of its sh uh, shipping container, you'll have these plastic, you know, housings that I was impressed with to begin with, which started me on this journey to, down the road to self-discovery and skills you need to do this. Um, what you have here is basically you look at the end, and this is all closed. Okay, so we have to open this up in order to get the cables to come through, and also we'll make one additional hole to make airflow come from the top, that where we put the fan, and make it go through. So in this area right here, there's some cables connections we need. We're also going to make a hole uh, underneath of here, like right along this edge, to let the uh, air out. Um, so if you look at the if you look at the end of the drive, okay, um, here's the power connector, and here's the da data connector, the SATA connector. Um, so what we need to do is cut a hole through that shield, and do if you get a really good razor knife, and just be real careful with it. Um, you can obviously see what you need to do is go ahead and cut an area out so you can get the cable through. Now leave uh, these ends down here obviously to hold the piece still in because you don't want to cut it all the way out because it's just basically going to be pushing through it. I mean you could do that but when you take this out you want something to hold on to. Um, so now you do this and the cables are going to be all lined up so you can plug those in. Also note here, uh, you can see it through the table, um, there's a hole through here 
and I went ahead and at this bottom edge, I went ahead and took this flap that was right here and put a hole in there. So the air, the air for the fan is going to go around, it's going to come down through the top, it's going to go underneath the assembly, it'll split a little bit on both sides, and then it'll go underneath the assembly and then it'll come out this hole right here. So there you got your airflow guaranteed. Sure the box leaks a lot, but you know you don't want to go that way. Uh, you'd rather have some, a good airflow path. So, um, so once you get that done, now it's ready to go ahead and you need to line this up with the box. You know, you need to line this area up with the box and cut a hole in the box. So, and to do that, basically, uh, this is the next step. In this next step, what you do is go ahead and take the box and uh, the end you want is going to be the hinged end where the cables come out. Go ahead and put your uh, piece that you've already cut, put it in here. Uh, usually like take a felt tip pin, ball point pins don't work very well, but I'm using one here as an example. But just basically go in here and go ahead and mark, basically just, just you know, whip it around a little bit and mark where that square is. And you take that out, which you'll have, in this case, you already see that I've cut it out, but you'll see, you'll have a little square back here. You can see where you meant to draw a square, it might be weird shaped, but you can see where the square is. And then go ahead and cut that area out and that's where your cables are going to go through. So we're just about done now. Uh, we've got our whole fan mounted on there with the screws. I put all four screws in. And I put uh, four nuts on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cardboard. Uh, but, you know, can't throw too many rocks. I've uh, got our wire routed for the fan. Haven't spent too much time on this, actually. Uh, like I said, to begin with, I said it was a happy observation, happy accident, happy mistake. Sometimes you get involved with this and it takes more time and you're like, man, why did I ever start this project? This is not one of those projects that actually works out fairly well, even if, you know, you're, I'm an engineer. Um, but you know, even if you have a, um, a technical skill level or just a basic tool skill level, it's not too bad. Uh, one of the issues with this, and they're going to put comments and not watch the video, is the box will catch on fire. Well, yeah, that is a genuine concern. Uh, this power supply, I've, uh, the power supply will plenty of use for this. I cracked it open. It's, it's current limited, and it has a, uh, a thermal fuse in it, a resettable thermal fuse. Um, and for this, the, 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 the board, the PC board in this is, what they call 94VO, which is, it's, it's not combustible, it smokes, but it won't burn. Um, I've tested hard drives for years and years and had lightning strike them and done things to try to catch them on fire and it's just almost impossible. But you know how that is with fire. <laughs> uh, go conservative on that. If you really wanted to, you could go and take uh, a foil, you know, a tape like this and just line the inside with foil. Uh, basically. Uh, acts as a, a heat shield for a fire that if it started it wouldn't go very far and the fire is going to put itself out. This plastic is, uh, is, is a, a plastic that doesn't burn, it just smolders and goes out and then the more, more smoke it makes actually it puts its, the fire out. So you know it, it is an issue. I have never ever seen it ever on computers that caught on fire because of a lightning strike. The disk drives don't catch on fire. and. Um, you know, the, the boards have, have always held together when they actually did get a strike and there's, there's some components on there that, that stop the strike on the disk drive. Not been a problem. If you wanted to, you can actually take, you know, put some pieces of, I don't know, something in here, asbestos or something else. Asbestos if you're in Canada. <laughs> they don't have asbestos anywhere else um, in North America anymore. But uh, that is a good point, but it's very, very, very low risk. You got a fan in here, so it's not going to get very hot. And um, so basically what we're talking about now is to connect up the final uh, cables, hook up the uh, power. We've got uh, our fan coming through, the power for the fan is coming out the back hole. We've got this uh, adapter that came with the power supply. It's got the old style uh, PC connector on it and it's got the new style um, SATA connector for the drive. Uh, for this, just basically tip it up. The uh, connector has a little L in it on one end and you can find the L key inside the box and just basically plug it in. So that's a good deal. The power supply uh, has a uh, obviously plug in and it's also got this cable here which is the uh, the Molex, the old four pin style disk drive connector and it just goes, it just plugs into uh, where the disk drive is and it's keyed so you can flip it over like that. So now we have power. Last thing to do is to go ahead and hook up the ESATA cable. The, uh, the, the one, and I always get this mixed up, okay. The one that goes to the disk drive has, it has a little L in it. It has a little keying L, and if you look at it, you can see a, an L in it. Uh, that goes obviously on the short, the only other connector that's left besides the one that's there. So you just go ahead and, and plop that in, and you're good to go. 
Um, the other end obviously just snaps into the back of the DVR. So um, you've got your power supplies, you've got your cables, you've got your fan, uh, and you're ready to go. Go ahead and hook this up, and if it's really obnoxious and your wife complains or whatever, somebody complains, you can uh, paint it black, you know? This basically is <laughs> It's basically uh, cheap, free, you're recycling. How's that? You're recycling packaging and making a hard drive enclosure out of it. And also you're getting uh, something that doesn't exist. You're getting a two terabyte add-on drive for a uh, DirecTV DVR. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, just post them and I'll try to get back to you with some answers as soon as I can. This is the E SATA to SATA cable that you need to, to make the connection between the, the disk drive and the back of the uh, the DVR. It's an, the e, e SATA is obviously external SATA. Um, this is a a Cresty cable. <laughs> and I haven't had too many problems with these kind of cables. I've used this manufacturer before. This was like two dollars and fifty cents, something like that, from Newegg. Um, this is the the model number here. Basically, I'm going to type that in. I'll go ahead in the notes for the video. I'll have a, a bill of material for you know all the connectors and things that goes with this. The uh, power adapter, the power supply I'm using, is a Bitex kind of a generic power supply. Uh, you can get these for about six dollars on sale. I got this at around six dollars on sale at Newegg. Um, the back specifications. I'll go ahead and, and flash them up on the screen. It tells you a little bit about what this thing does. It has like twice the amount of of uh, power required for just one drive, <laughs> uh, so it's it's uh, it's something that's fairly cheap, and you can actually use it for a lot of different things uh, besides doing this for the five volts and twelve volts. You know, if you got other projects that that you're working on that you'd like to have a five volt, twelve volt power supply for.